Hello, you're watching Shalom World News. I'm Katie Asko from Dublin, Ireland, and these are your latest headlines from around the world. The Holy Father Pope Francis held a video conference with his Russian Orthodox counterpart, Patriarch Kirill, on Wednesday, March 16th. In the conference, attended by Cardinal Kurt Koch, President of the Pontifical Council for Christian Unity, and the Metropolitan Hilarion Head of the External Relations Department of the Moscow Patriarchate, the conversation focused on the war in Ukraine and the role of Christian leaders in ensuring peace. Speaking to the Patriarch, the Pope said that the Church must not use the language of politics, but the language of Jesus. He said, quote, We are shepherds of the same holy people who believe in God, in the Holy Trinity, in the Holy Mother of God. That is why we must unite in the effort to aid peace. Both Church leaders agreed that the Churches are called to contribute to strengthening peace and justice. Ever since the Russian invasion of Ukraine began, more than 100 children have been killed in the Eastern European nation, said the major archbishop of the Ukrainian Greek Catholic Church, his beatitude Shevchuk. In his video message on Wednesday, March 16th, the top prelate said that the hands of the criminals who began this war are responsible for the blood of innocent children. In his message, the major archbishop said that as each second passes, one Ukrainian child is forced to become a refugee. He lamented that more than 100 children have perished in bombings and many more are injured. He also urged believers to pray for the children of Ukraine and to defend them. Major Archbishop Shevchuk thanked the Holy Father for his decision to consecrate Ukraine and Russia to the Immaculate Heart of the Virgin Mary. Also regarding the war in Ukraine, during his customary general audience on Wednesday in Paul VI Hall, the Holy Father Pope Francis led a special prayer for an end to the conflict. He made additions to a prayer composed by the Archbishop of Naples in Italy, Monsignor Domencio Battaglia. The pontiff pleaded with God to forgive humanity for the brutality of war and exhorted believers to seek God's forgiveness and peace as the war in Ukraine intensifies. On the occasion, he also addressed young boys and girls in the audience and appealed to them to be mindful of and pray for their suffering Ukrainian peers who are braving the cold, bombs and projectiles, have nothing to eat and are forced to flee. Meanwhile, Vatican Secretary of State Cardinal Pietro Parolin said on Wednesday that prayer is never useless, adding that believers have to continue to pray for peace. He made this comment during his homily while offering Mass in St. Peter's Basilica, in which members of the diplomatic corps were present. The Polish Catholic bishops have strongly condemned the attacks against innocent civilians in Ukraine that cause great loss of life, especially among women and children. The prelates issued a statement on March 15th, the last day of their two-day gathering in Warsaw, for the 391st plenary meeting. In the statement, they expressed their wish to, quote, speak out against Russia's unjustified aggression against Ukraine, an independent and sovereign country governed by democratic principles. They appealed to those responsible for the outbreak of the aggression and the people of Ukraine to refrain from hostilities and initiate efforts to conclude a just peace. The bishops also exhorted the faithful to ceaselessly pray as well as fast if possible for peace in Ukraine and expressed gratitude to Caritas Poland for the selfless assistance to refugees. Poland has welcomed a vast number of the Ukrainian refugees with more than 1.4 million having crossed the Polish border. Tuesday the 15th of March marked the 11th anniversary of the onset of civil war in Syria, prompting the Apostolic Nuncio to Syria, Cardinal Mario Zanari, to express concern that the conflict in the Middle Eastern nation is rarely talked about these days. The devastated nation is mourning more than half a million deaths, and the Cardinal made an appeal saying, do not let hope die. In an interview with Vatican News, the envoy lamented that hope has left the hearts of many people, especially the young, as they see a bleak future in Syria. Syria, where there are still no signs of reconstruction or economic recovery. Meanwhile, the Holy Father has sent a letter assuring Syrian Christians of the Church's concern for them. The letter was sent to Cardinal Leonardo Sandri, Prefect of the Congregation for Oriental Churches, who took part in a conference in Damascus dedicated to listening, dialogue and the future of Christian communities in the region. Meanwhile, in the United States, the U.S. Conference of Catholic Bishops Administrative Committee has come out with a statement calling for an immediate cessation of the armed aggression of Russia and Ukraine that has left thousands dead and displaced millions. The bishops said, quote, In the name of God, listen to the cry of those who suffer and put an end to the bombings and the attacks. The prelates said that similar appeals have been made by Orthodox prelates, including many Russian believers. The American prelates also said that the possibility of global warfare is 
augmented by the unthinkable consequences resulting from the use of nuclear weapons. They urged all Catholics and people of goodwill to pray for peace in Ukraine, adding that peace is a weapon of hope. Also in the US, in the state of Wyoming, Governor Mark Gordon has inked a new bill that would prohibit abortions five days after the Supreme Court repeals the Roe v. Wade judgment, which originally legalized abortion in the country in 1973. The new law will come into effect only if the nation's top court overturns Roe v. Wade, which is hoped by pro-lifers will happen this summer. The legislation entitled House Bill 92 was given approval during the recently concluded legislative budget session. Commonly known Known as the Abortion Prohibition Supreme Court decision, the legislation is a trigger bill, which is a law that can only be enforced if the circumstances change in the future. Tweaks to the bill include an exception in cases of rape or incest. Finally, in Argentina, the Bishop's Commission for Life, the Laity and the Family has marked March 25th as a day of prayer for the unborn child. This year's Feast of the Annunciation comes with the motto, Embrace Life with Tenderness and Mercy. In a statement, the prelate said, quote, Today, more than ever, reality demands that we enter without fear into the totality of human existence that makes its way in different contexts and circumstances, going through various challenges, stages and experiences. The bishops also invite believers to look at the Virgin Mary and discover the path as a church to take on this challenge for evangelization and pastoral care. In the statement, the bishop said that as the church and as Christians, we are, quote, called to closely touch the concrete existence of others, in this case of mothers and children who need our support and our help. Those are your latest headlines. Do join us tomorrow and visit swnews.org for more updates. Shalom.